But I mean, for, for now, uh, Twitter yeah, yeah. part's important. I mean, we're using Discord right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm running application. Um, I don't want that looking blurry. I want the font to look yeah. like proper font. So that's just a scaling thing. Another thing we did was making sure shortcuts still work. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, yes. We use a Discord one. example, pressing a button, uh, push push a talk. Yep. Fine, you want it to work. Wayland's got a concept of not allowing key loggers, which reasonable, you know. Fair enough, I mean, I'm yeah. going to say it's not reasonable. Uh, but what we've introduced in Quinn is a setting that says if you press a combination or just control or shift on its own, you can send that to X. Mm-hmm. Your password isn't going to consist of control or F or, mm-hmm. or, or, or the volume up key. It's only going to consist of actual letters and numbers. Right. So anything else isn't security sensitive. So... Can, we can share that. If it unbreaks applications, and it's a setting up, unfortunately, off by default, mm-hmm. but um, I mean, that's maybe a discussion, but at least as, as a path, at least as a path yeah. to say, we're going to fix all your shortcuts and still do it in a safe way. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important. It's not just we've given up. We're not, we're not saying, oh, just have a, let everyone be keyloggers. It's you can actually solve the real problem that the users are facing without having to jump between these two extremes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my per- that is one of my personal pet issues because I use OBS a lot and I will switch between my scenes using hotkeys on my keyboard. And that's something that I can't do on Sway. I could do on Hyperlane because they actually have their own system. I can do on KDE because there's like, you know, a system now. But... That's a, that, that, like, if I don't have that, that's a massive regression. Like, there are, like, weird work... One of the workarounds I was going to do was have, like, web sockets to do it, because that would be <laughs> the only other reasonable way to make it happen. But having, like, I know the end goal is, like, the global shortcuts portal. Like, that is the, the intention, but you are, like, you've made this point a bunch of times. Having these transitionary steps until you get to the actual good goal is so important because the user doesn't really care about how it works. Like, there are there are these nerdy users who care about the technical stuff on the back end. But at the end of the day, like, I want my things to be working. And I don't really care how you get to working. That, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I think the KDE side, you've got things a bit harder than... If you use... Don't sway. Mm-hmm. Wait, it's got the word way in the title. Mm-hmm. You go out of your way to only find apps that work in Wayland. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it's, that's what your user base is catering for. To not lose some of my existing user base, I have to make things work for people who already have this hatred of, of Wayland. Mm-hmm. And I think it's perfectly reasonable for me to say, as a desktop engineer, I control how your pixels get to a screen. I control how your input gets to the application. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's reasonable for me to say that media player you use from United because you like it shouldn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think that shouldn't be my call to make. I think it's my job to make that work. Mm-hmm. So we've got your scaling. We've got your shortcuts. My favorite feature, mm-hmm. the old X11 system tray, right? the version yep. before, for your debug standard, a version where you put a window and you embedded it in another window. That still works on our Wayland implementation. Like, it's a version from the eighties, and it works. The way it works is horrible. <laughs> we don't talk about the way it works, <laughs> but it, it works. You can mm. you can run hex chat, um, which you know probably hasn't been used since whenever it was last written. I, I, it's my go-to example. <laughs> and, yeah, system tray appears. You can right-click on it. You can left-click on it. As far as it's concerned, it's got its own little X11 window embedded in another panel somewhere. That panel happens to be off-screen, but it doesn't know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is such a janky, hacky method, but I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then that communicates via Dbus over your newer protocol to uh, to, to, to system tray uh, by by just taking screenshots of it occasionally. That is disgusting. I hate that. 
but what's interesting is I broke it. Um, right. Into, that's not interesting part. Yeah, um, okay. I broke it for, for for some esoteric setups. I broke it when using multi monitor and with scaling. Right. <laughs> Because, you know, okay, yep, yep, yep. Fair, fair enough. I, 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 I did that, and then we got bug reports. Mm. So that's how you know something's being used, uh, because if you break it and then you get bug reports, then it must be being used. Mm -hmm. And and obviously somebody else went and fixed it because it was Fushin Wen. More shout out. Um, uh, but yeah, he, and I think that's it's, it's important to not break other apps. Mm -hmm. And then that brings us to you know, x Whale and Video Bridge, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which you wanted to discuss, which came out of an accident. We were uh, uh, using a uh, conference calling for work, um, actually using Discord to chat with somebody, and we sh I like sharing screen to go over some code. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've hit a problem where I can't share my code uh, to do with somebody. And... We're actually working on some PipeWire implementation because mm -hmm. uh, we use PipeWire quite a lot for, you know, when you hover over task manager, you get little previews. Ah, yeah. Yep. Um, yep. So ah, we're using PipeWire for that because it really helps us test all of the remote desktop stuff that used for more edge cases. So mm -hmm. using it as a uh, daily driver. And we, we had some issue on some driver, some contents were flipped or something. I can't remember what, what we were doing, but <laughs> weird esoteric stuff with streaming. And the best thing you do is you have a test tool, you have a window, it shows your contents. And all this stuff with Pipewire doesn't actually involve Wayland at all. Mm -hmm. It's Pipewire. So yeah. I just went out of my own to, okay, force a platform to X11, and I can show a uh, content upside down. And I was like, well, actually, you can see not just my debug tool, but you can see the contents of that debug tool. You mm -hmm. can see my, I mean, uh, see what we're doing. It's like, that's actually quite a useful product. And we had all your code. It was written for a test. All I need to do is make it, make, make, make tidy it up, make it, make it full screen and do some, Slightly questionable things or making it appear invisible so you don't see a window twice. Which involves some creative code, which no window manager developer should ever look at because they will shout at me. <laughs> but, I mean, it shows the importance of being able to do these crazy flexible things. I like that. And, yeah, so we, we packaged it up and we were planning to release that as, as an application of, if you want to do a streaming, open it up. Mm -hmm. And then I took it to um, people paying with me, and it was like, oh, we came up with this idea, didn't take us long, uh, and then it fixes this, this extra issue. And they were like, cool, and now you're going to make it automatic, right? No, no, that would be literally impossible. And they're like, oh, yeah, you'll make it automatic. I was left a call thinking, I've got no idea how I'm going to do that. I'll put in two days. And then write up a report saying it was impossible. <laughs> um, that was my plan. But, and, and started looking for options. And managed to make something that worked. Mm -hmm. There's X11 extensions to let you know when other events happen to other clients. Mm -hmm. And I could detect when somebody tried to redirect, when any client tried to call a redirect method for a window, and which window oh. idea it had. So it's a very lightweight filter. It's only intercepting this one event. And then I check, does that window match my window? If so, boom, pop up the portal. And I was quite surprised that <laughs> we found something. I mean, it was a third attempt. Um, and yeah, I'm quite happy with it as an end user product. I guess that's... And hopefully... I was going to say, I guess that's what happens when a protocol's been around for over 30 years. There's going to be, like, weird edge case uh, built in every... Like, just weird ideas that someone has at some point. Like, I'm just going to extend this on. And just happens to find something that does what you need. Absolutely. I mean, I, f I feel like I'm doing more X11 work since we started working on Wayland than I ever did <laughs> back, when, back when I was... Um actually working on x11 mm -hmm. ironically so I, I never had to open x11 source code before now it's almost a regular occurrence to try and make sure all your sex ways and stuff works <laughs> as well as it should <laughs>